I want to talk about some of the mistakes that I see land developers make in this industry. And this is coming from a perspective of a civil engineer. I've been doing this for about six and a half years now. I've seen everything from due diligence to design, permitting, construction, closeout. I've seen very successful projects and I've seen projects go sideways. Now this is no way a finger pointing match. This isn't me complaining. This is me just making observations on what I have seen through my own two eyes and how I think land developers and engineers alike can help help make better decisions and reduce risk of the development. Because at the end of the day, you're trying to get your project approved, built, constructed, closed out, and underway. So I mean, we're all on the same team here. Let's start with the number one mistake that developers make, which is not ordering critical information like a geotech report, title work, Alta survey, environmental reports. I mean, these are the basic building blocks of a land development project. And I've took some notes here. So starting with geotech, I've seen jobs get canceled because of bad soils. Now, the tough part about that was that the developer had already spent thousands of dollars on hiring other consultants like engineers and contractors to start designing, start you know gathering some budgets of the site. And we went so far, and again, time is money. So the developer is spending all this time and money and the geotech for some reason was pushed so far out that once we received it, the project just couldn't move forward. None of the soils were usable. So when you get those geotech reports, if you don't really understand how to read them, you're looking to see if you can use a lot of that soil, especially if you're going to use it for structural fill, like under a building or under roads. Also, you want to get good geotech of where your proposed ponds are going to be, just so you can see what you're going to potentially be hauling off or using. Also, seasonal high water can blow up a whole site, if you have really super high seasonal high water, that can start adding costs for dewatering. It ends up pretty much forcing you to build up your site. So just things to think about. But step one is just getting the geotech report. I mean, this goes without saying you need a survey. You need some sort of boundary topo survey. To take it to the next level, you definitely want an Alta survey or title ordered. I've seen residential development projects wipe away 20 lots just because title wasn't pulled or just wasn't understood that there was an existing oil main cutting through the property. When you pull title, you'll understand any existing easements, encumbrances, anything that could impact the design of the project. You can't wait too long for that information. Now, as far as just general survey items, a risky developer will cut corners, tell the engineer, hey, just use as built or just use this information. You don't need a survey. And in one job, I saw an engineer just use the as built as directed by the client. And it turns out the existing water main was actually on the opposite side of the right of way. So a simple five, ten, twenty thousand dollar survey that the developer could have ordered turned into almost 80 to $100,000 because of the time lost, the schedule, the new survey that you ultimately had to get in the first place, the directional bore under the road, which is costly, and then coordinating with the county and city on the approval. So just remember when your engineer is recommending you to get this survey in order to do their job, just know that that price is ultimately going to be saving you thousands of dollars on the back end and time. Last but not least, we can't forget about the environmental study. I've seen a bald eagle's nest at a year to construction timelines. I've seen flagging wetlands at a whole year and change a whole rezoning effort. I've seen Kara Kara panther studies that needed to be performed but never were. And then the client gets so mad at everyone else, but if only the question were asked sooner and if only the right team was on board, all these risks could have been avoided. Number two mistake that I see land developers make is just not understanding the true nature of timelines both from a design and construction perspective, but also from a permitting perspective. So this happens very often. So some developers will try to get engineers and everyone to do eight weeks of work and to squeeze it all the way down into five weeks. A developer also won't factor in timelines needed to actually QAQC the plan sets and reports and work through comments with agencies that might arise. And here's kind of what that real life example looks like. So you're a developer, you're helping a fast food chain or maybe some sort of retail store develop some properties. You get these schedules maybe from above saying, hey, you need to get like full construction plans and everything wrapped up in two to three months. And you're signing up the engineer, you're signing up consultants, you're organizing meetings, you're kicking everything off. But then there's never been a bigger picture step back just to ask where you're at even in this process. So two to three months out, let's break that down. So have pre-application meetings even been set up? Those can be weeks out, sometimes even a month. Has any due diligence been performed? Has the survey been ordered? Has there been a site investigation report? 
were, how long do the engineers actually take to produce a 50% plan? What's a critical path for them? Which is survey, title, geotech, everything that I mentioned before. And how long will it take them to create a concept plan? That might take them a couple weeks. All of a sudden, you just started realizing that that two to three months out, really, you're not even going to start those types of plans a month, two months out. And then you're looking for someone to blame, which is typically the civil engineer. And then they're hounding the engineer to take four to five weeks for the actual construction plans and to condense it all the way down to two to three weeks, which is crazy. Lastly is permitting for developers. You need to know about permits just as much as the engineer or whoever the permit coordinator is. You need to be familiar with the reviewers, the process, if it's online, if it's in person, and the documents you need. Sometimes there's things that you have to sign or fill out, and those might take like a couple days to get notarized and to get back and forth between the right parties. I've seen projects lose months of opening just because a utility permit was never filed. Like, how do you even miss that? The number three mistake that land developers typically make is they don't build relationships with the engineers or architects. And let me just say this, I, I totally understand. I mean, developers pay the bills. They can be as pushy as they want. Their livelihoods are on the line. Their bonus is on the line. Sometimes it's a cutthroat environment. Everyone's just getting yelled at from above, right? But if your engineer and architect is telling you critical information and is advising you and, and feels really strongly about it and is giving you realistic timeframes, give them just the very slight benefit of the doubt. Challenge them, but don't fully beat them up because what I've seen from my experience and from what I hear around the entire industry of engineers is sometimes if you just give them those one to two extra days to actually get things in order and review the plan set, review the reports, you're actually going to end up saving like three to four weeks in the long run. Whereas if you're just rushing, rushing, rush everything, oh, we have to get it in, have to get it in. Well, that's just when things typically go wrong. You know, there's this whole drop dead date, but see now everyone's moving fast instead of thought. And there's a balance to this. There's an art form to this type of communication. I think developers can be more open-minded, helpful, and strategic all at the same time. It's important that hard questions are asked. It's important that the engineer is challenged, but there's also a way to do it to where it's more collaborative and it's more of a team effort because everyone has the same goal in mind, which is to get a permit and to get this thing constructed. The last thing that I'll say here is that you want people to like working with you or else on that next job, the engineer, everyone, they're just going to increase their fee by 10, 15% because you're difficult to work with. And that is a real thing in this industry. That's all I have for today. I wanted to make this short and sweet. These are things that I'm still kind of seeing in this industry. And at the end of the day, I think we can all work better as a team to achieve the milestones that we want to hit, be efficient, to be thoughtful, to de-risk projects and move forward the right way. If you're a land developer or engineer, contractor, drop a comment below on some critical things that you see. You know, maybe there's a mistake that's often made in the field. Let me hear about it in the comments and hopefully we can all get better from it. Hope this helps. Peace out. I got a lot of things I'd like to keep behind me. Things keeping me from shining, had my CDs that was keeping me from whining, yet my knees were